What happens when two extroverts meet? Well, the general thing is that they will tend to have a bit of an extroverted screaming match, right? Where one or two will try to talk over each other. So whoever talks faster, whoever talks louder, whoever has more energy and puts more conviction into their words will tend to come out on top. And the other person will leave the situation feeling less extroverted than the other. So essentially the pattern we would see is this. One would shoot up and one would shoot down. Uh, one person becoming more of an extrovert and one person becoming more of an introvert, essentially. This becomes intensified the longer the two people will interact with each other. And while the one person, while both of them might have started out as extroverts, the trend still st remains the same, that we tend to compensate for each other's behaviors in social relationships in order to find balance. The goal, of course, is balance in the sense that one person will naturally gravitate towards the role of a listener while one is an extrovert. Now, in healthy relationships, you'll find that these kind of things shift and the dynamic might go up and down depending on who has energy and who is in flow and who is in stress and who is in, you know, whatever is going on, right? But essentially what we're talking about here is social alchemy or social chemistry, essentially. We're looking at what happens when two different personality types interact with each other who is going to be what and what is going to be the outcome of the interaction. You could say that when two people interact, a third entity is formed. So person A plus person B equals group C. Essentially, group C has different emerging properties than both of these two people. So if A was an INFJ and B was an ESTP, C would be some kind of different personality type. Perhaps it would be an ENFP, depending on the nature of their interaction, right? So this is important to remember. You have, as individuals, your own unique properties and qualities, but together you create your own outcome of qualities and traits. And you can use these to solve different types of problems. Every single relationship offers you opportunities to learn new things and to solve other kinds of problems and to look at things from different perspectives. That is why social alchemy is so powerful. You want to have big social networks and deep social networks, rich friends who you can have deep conversations with to really get these new emerging properties. Alone, you have the ability to serve, solve a certain set of problems as an INFP. You can take care of all the things that happen here, but you can't take care of anything that's there, 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 or there, there, there. Essentially, those things are outside your scope. But thanks to the help of your friend who's an ENFP, you are able to boundary into other types of problems. And together, you also take on other emerging skills like this and this outside of each other's scope. So this is why relationships are so powerful, right? Now... Often it's hard to predict what the outcome of two people interacting can be. You never really know how you're going to show up and it will depend on your level of flow or energy and how you're doing it that day, but also each other's different personalities. So let's focus on an introverted intuitive who is very introverted and very intuitive. And let's focus on an introverted sensing type. The outcome here would be something like either IN or IS. So essentially what we would get here is some kind of subdued intuition or subdued sensing. Intuition and sensing has a protective relationship dynamic. When intuition and sensing meets, into, or, well, intuition, introverted intuition, introverted sensing meet, they tend to protect each other's they tend to move towards a resolving anxieties and worries. So these two types will help each other overcome potential worries and anxieties. What happens if an introvert intuitive meets an extroverted intuitive? Well, the outcome is typically passion. Typically, 
there tends to be a lot of shared passion between these two types because introversion and extroversion together with intuition and intuition will combine to share the interests but different approaches, creating a bit of a dynamic exchange of two people looking at the same thing from different angles. So you're looking at the same thing, which is the intuition, but you're looking at it from different angles, introverted angle and extroverted angle. What happens though if you meet with an extroverted sensing type? Well, in general, if two extroverted sensors meet, and they're both very extroverted and both very sensing, the outcome is challenge. We don't realize this. We assume that identical pairings, meeting your soulmate who is exactly like you, essentially, right? That that would be a harmonious exchange, but most of the time it's a challenging exchange because your sensing will challenge their sensing and your extroversion will challenge their extroversion. Essentially, it is like the meeting of two opposite colored electrons. Opposites tend to push against each other's rather than attract, right? So they tend to challenge each other's. And similarly, two identical types tend to have this kind of challenging aspect, right? So what about an extroverted intuitive meeting an introverted sensing type? So if you're an extroverted intuitive and you run into an introverted sensor who's very introverted and you're very extroverted, well, typically what happens is you take on two different uh, parts in the relationship. It's a bit of a duality. Essentially, duality is when the EN takes on one property and one function and the other one takes on another function. Essentially, it's a bit of a collaborative kind of exchange. It's collaboration because this person does what this one can't and this person does what this one can't. And so, in that regard, they're kind of equally distributing problems. So, you take this and I take that. And that is often why these kinds of exchanges tend to be quite collaborative, right? And all of these exchanges are positive. People always wonder, what's the best MBTI type for me to date? What personality works best with me? Well, it depends on what you're looking for. Are you looking for passion? Well, that suggests you might want to go for uh, somebody who's extroverted in nature of what you are. So an introvert intuitive, going for an extroverted intuitive. Uh, feeling perceiving type, going to, for a feeling judging type, right? That is the dynamic for passion. If you're looking for a calm and harmonious kind of relationship, well, you might want to look for an opposite kind of pairing, right? The I-N-E-S, I-S-E-N, right? These kind of relationships are associated with high levels of calm. And if you're looking for a challenging matchup, like somebody you can intellectually spar with, you might want to look for, uh, for example, somebody that is the same type as you. Here you can collaborate and compete with each other to push each other to each other's limits, right? So testing, overcoming limits is the key here, right? Equally, every relationship will help you with different things. If you want to have a peaceful relationship, if you want to overcome anxiety, if you've had an anxious upbringing, often an IN going for an IS could work, right? So this is because you kind of protect each other and keep each other safe from difficult situations, avoid, help each other avoid challenges and other things that are pushing on you, right? So that's social alchemy. That's kind of how we influence each others. And this is complicated because it depends on essentially how strong your preference is for a personality trait and also how much in flow you are at that time. And this is also why our relationships can change depending on our mood, our state of mind and the situation you're in, right? So keep an open mind and think about how you can have a positive exchange with every single person that you meet. Thank you all for watching and don't forget to hit like and subscribe.